So what was it? What was what was the magic of that show that made it such a hit? Um, because it just showed regular people. It showed a regular family of working class people. And, you know, that's who the audience is and that they they always forget that, you know. But uh, yeah. that's who the audience is. And they wanted to see I thought they wanted to see themselves not being put down, but being lifted up. And so that's what I tried to do. Mm hmm. One of my favorite episodes of the show, I just pulled a little clip because it's something I remembered all these years. It just would make you laugh out loud at talking about real people problems, and but with a sense of humor, not in a dark or sad way. Uh, and it was the episode where DJ, your son on the show, got into the school spelling bee. And we just had a, a, one of our little guys win his spelling bee at his school. So this is timely for my family too. The funniest thing ever. Here it is, Sat 2. Go, Deej. You can do it, buddy. Be the word. Sound it out. Jeez, it's just a spelling bee. Maybe to you, pal, but it's all we've got. <laughs> Everybody. <laughs> oh, please, please let it be a word he knows. David Jacob. Your word is foreclosure. <laughs> For the listening audience, Dan Connor puts his arm around Roseanne. They sit back. They know a kid's got it. <laughs> Peter. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Those moments are belly laughs that you brought to us for years. <laughs> It's what made us all fall in love with you and John Goodman, you know, the Connor family. They became like members of our family. It must have been, to the, to the outsider, it seems like it would have been a very special time. Do you remember it fondly or do you remember, you know, the battles that must have also been going on behind the scenes? Both. I remember the performance on Friday that we taped in front of a live audience being just the best and that it uh, made the uh, previous four days worth it. And those previous four days were a battle every minute, every day with writers, with producers. Um, but I had a great crew and they pulled me through so many things and uh, just so many things. And um, I'm and, sure uh, I mean, my, uh, my, um, my allegiance was to my crew because my crew to me represented the people at home who, who, you know, were my fans and the audience. And of course my real allegiance was to them because mm -hmm. they're the ones who made the show and they're the ones who made me. So of course my allegiance was not to any network people, but to them and still what is. Were the, what were but, the tensions? Uh, like what, what, what kind of a hard time were they giving you? We talked a little bit about Matt Williams and them trying to sort of steal credit as, as, you know, from you, but what else? What were what were some of the power battles? Well, they deal, did steal credit, and I tried to fight that. I went to my agents. I went to the network president. I went to uh, lawyers. I went everywhere because I said, this is wrong. And then they said, um, well, you waited 10 days. You, you didn't respond within 10 days, so, you know, you have no fight left. That's what the Writers Guild told me. And uh, at that time, I was like, how am I going to fight this? And once they won that battle, then the next battle was, oh, now you have to say what we tell you to say, even though I was the author and it was about my life. And, mm. uh, you know, every character in it was about my life or someone in my life, my own three children, my, my own husband, me. And uh, then they were going to start telling me what I was going to say. And it was all sexist. It was all backward sexism. And I wasn't gonna play it that way because I didn't come to TV to be a caricature. I I came to be an anti-caricature of a woman, which was unheard of, of course, except for just a couple exceptions of other women who I love and admire from television. But uh, so I, I battled that and, uh, you know, they would keep the cameras on me. And I said, I need it. My lawyer said, just say, I request a line change. And so I said, I request a line change. And they said, no, you're not going to get it. Say the line as written. That went on for eight hours. Um, mm. And, uh, you know, they could, I guess they couldn't come up with a new line. 
And then I'd say, well, do you want me to write the line? And they were really horrified that I would write the joke because it would be funny. And that's one thing they hate is funny. And um, so then I just said, fine, I'm going to just do it. And then I just started writing and put in put them in myself. I just said no. And, uh, you know, they kept trying to break my back. But that doesn't work for, for a Jewish girl from Utah, a poor working class Jewish girl from Utah. It doesn't work to try to break my back. So uh, my sister, who um, is very strong, too, she drew out a chessboard and she said, here's what you're going to do here's their king, here's their queen, this and that and the other, and you're going to take your guy and this and that and the other. And I went, yeah, I got a game plan, you know. And so I hung a thing on my door. This was after the first episode when I couldn't get created by credit or even share created by credit in my creation. I, I wrote a poster on my door and I said, these are the people that will be fired when this show goes to number one and I put all their names down including the network president and everybody that I didn't you know that I felt had screwed me over and uh, when the show went to number one they were all gone including that network president so I just by sheer force of will and um, you know I want to say having grown up in an apartment house with holocaust survivors as a girl I am not a person that uh, can be broken I don't know why, but I'm not. It, it must have been so a little anyway, awkward when they came to visit you in your up, office and saw their names on a on a kill sheet. Huh? Like, did anybody did anybody see it was on the back of your door with a you know big X over? Oh this yeah, guy's they face all and, saw it. They all saw it, and uh, they thought it was funny. And um, and uh, you know, everybody thought it was funny, and I laughed too, uh, like I thought it was funny. You know, I'd be like, these are the people that are gone. They're like, oh, you are such a fun, funny person. And as soon as it was number one, I'm like, I won't even have to remove them because they'll just get rid of themselves. And the first the first thing I did was ban the producers from the set. And, uh, you know, because I didn't want anybody there who was just there to give me grief. And, you know, I wanted to be creative and funny. I wanted to have fun. I wanted to write lines for the other characters. I wanted to, you know, create art for television for my viewers that I love. And they just hate that. You know, they hate. Now I look back, I'm like, they, they really hate all talent because they've done their best to squash it and ruin it. And uh, but they particularly hate a woman who has it. So I got a double dose. But at the end of the third season, when I got rid of Matt Williams, they told me, well, he will be gone, but you'll have to wait this many days. So I counted those down and, you know, that was a fight. But uh, when I got rid of him and I got my writers and I hired a lot of comics and people who had never had a job before as writers, um, gave a lot of writers their first job who went on to, you know, sitcom history. Um, Judd Apatow. Uh, but by the end of the third, yeah, Judd Apatow, um, Ross Whedon, um, Chuck Lorre, tons of, I can't remember, a million other names. Uh, but at the end of the third or fourth season, I was very, very happy because I had helped to unionize the crew. And I feel like that's my greatest accomplishment, that mm. they would get benefits, not just They really just pay, wanted you to shut up I, and act I, and, and just be the actress in the lead role as opposed to the creator, the joke writer, all the things. Yeah. I mean, all the things that made you a star who they solicited in the first place. And yet, despite the behind-the-scenes turmoil, yeah, the show is just— Yeah, I don't even just, know why— I don't even know. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't even know why— I, I don't know. Like Margaret Cho talks about it a lot. Why do they even want us? The first thing they do is like, you need to shut up now. And like they wrote Roseanne Connor as if she just sat there. And then happened Dan. That's how they wrote no, my character. On. I was like, oh, Christ. Some people take CBD for better sleep or less stress and more calm. Some take it for pain relief, for better energy, better focus and concentration. Today, I want to tell you about CB Distillery and their over 2 million satisfied customers. According to a poll of their customers, 90% reported that they sleep better with CBD, 81% said CBD helps with stress, and 80% says CBD helps with aches and pains after physical activity. If you struggle to get a good night's sleep, 
if you are dealing with too much stress and could use a little calm in your life, if you suffer with pain and discomfort, especially after physical ex- activity or exercise, you could give CBD a try from cbdistillery.com. Use my 20% discount by visiting cbdistillery.com and enter my initials MK to get that discount, all right? No prescription required. That's cbdistillery.com, promo code MK for 20% off, cbdistillery.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.